Hello everyone, my name is Jolene Schaefer. I'm the Marketing Coordinator for SWK Technologies, and I'd like to welcome you to our webinar, Payroll Comparison, a Deep Dive into SWK's Payroll Offerings, presented by Nathan Triplett of SWK Technologies. A little housekeeping before we get started. Everyone has been placed on mute to keep the background noise down. However, you can submit any questions you have throughout the webinar. To submit a question, look for the question section in your GoToWebinar. We will answer all questions at the end of the presentation. We are recording this presentation and it will be distributed tomorrow to all attendees, as well as to those who registered but were not able to attend. Please take a moment at the end of the presentation to answer our two question survey. With that said, we appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to attend our webinar. We're here to help you get the most out of your software solutions and help you find an easier way to run your business by providing software and industry knowledge, tools and support whenever you need it. So whether you're here doing research for a new solution or you're just here to learn, we'd like to encourage you to ask any questions throughout the webinar. Lastly, as a quick reminder, SWK is constantly sharing important updates and software tips and tricks on our social media channels. So we encourage you to follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Without further ado, I'll hand it over to Nathan. Perfect, thank you and welcome folks. Give me one second here and I will show my screen. All right, and get things started. So um, a quick introduction. Um, again, my name is Nathan Triplett. The picture of me in the middle is me. Um, Ten years ago, actually, I was looking for a headshot for this presentation and realized I didn't have an updated one. So if you look over on the left, those are my three boys. And on the right, um, that's another reason for the thousands of gray hairs um, that you'll see if you meet me again in the future. But my role here at SWK, I lead our HCM sales practice. Um, in my background, I've been doing this for about 10 years in different capacities. I've worked in account management. I certainly help organizations evaluate and purchase systems. But I've also led an implementation team for a number of years. And so when I look at systems and look at technology, how to evaluate them, what's the right fit for uh, the organizations that we work with, I try to marry all three of those perspectives because, you know, when we think about implementation, we have to be able to implement and realize the goals that we set out in the pre-sales. And um, having good alignment there is what's going to help us all be successful. So just a, a, a brief um, agenda for our, our presentation today. You know, before we get into the offerings, we want to kind of just go through where do we start um, from our payroll evaluations? Um, what are the right decisions to make? What are the questions to ask? What could be the right fit for you? What are the questions you should be thinking about internally? And from there, we'll go through our payroll offerings. And these aren't all of them, but they're the main ones that we um, will position to our customers being Sage 100 payroll. And looking through the group on the call today, I think most of you are Sage 100 payroll customers. Um, Sage HRMS payroll, which um, between Sage 100 and HRMS, those are our two on-prem uh, or install-based systems. And then we also have two flavors of Kronos and ADP within our portfolio that we'll talk through. Um, and then as mentioned, we'll have questions at the end. So feel free to type them in along the way as we go through the presentation or hold them for the end and we'll be sure to answer them to the best of our ability. So thinking about where we start, um, for me, easily the most important and overlooked part of the evaluation process is defining your goals and your challenges from the onset. And if you don't define your goals, it's really hard for us to design a system that's gonna help you to achieve them because we don't know what the target is. And if you don't define your hurdles, we don't know what success looks like. We don't know that we're gonna be putting you in a better place from a transactional perspective tomorrow. Further, if you only focus on your daily hurdles, really never make any progress to improve things long-term and, and, and look at the growth of the organization. And if we're only looking at the pie in the sky strategic items, then your daily tasks and the administration of those daily tasks are gonna continue to drain resources and morale um, and cause other challenges within the organization. So I find that finding balance with this alignment as and you look at your hurdles and your initiatives is critical to the success of not only the system that you choose, but how you roll it out and the phases you roll it out. And so just kind of thinking in some of the typical daily hurdles that we see, you know, a lot of organizations struggle with lack of, you know, employee time capture and controls. People are clocking in too early, they're clocking out too late, they're taking too long for lunch, um, those types of items. Report generation and compliance, these kind of go hand in hand for me, where um, a lot of organizations today that don't have dedicated systems are manually putting together reports. 
I can't tell you how many large organizations I work with that manually compile the EEO reports. Um, just the ability to easily generate that out of the system is something that's really solvable. And then in the bottom left here, you see, you know, no interface with, I think, again, most folks are Sage 100 here, no interface with the, the general ledger of Sage. So within Sage, the general ledger model, there's a GL import utility where our payroll systems, and quite frankly, most of them on the market, can produce an export file that we can easily push into the system with a level of detail that you're looking for. And as you think a little bit more along the strategic initiatives, aligning your modern talent demands, right? And it's something, it's, it's kind of a buzzword and talent and engagement, and you know these kind of go together with cultivating the employee experience. But what are our strategies um, to improve our employee experience, to, to retain employees, um, for succession planning, to manage millennials or Gen X or Gen Y? Because there's different things that we can do within our technology, within our performance tools, within our learning tools, um, within the recruiting, with our free hire screening that can help ensure we're bringing the right people in, do in the door from the, from the onset and then nurturing them and helping them grow. And when they may fall off the wagon, um, being able to raise a flag and adding in a mentor or just making sure we're paying attention to what's going on within our workforce. Um, and then really optimizing our HCM investments. I talk to a lot of folks that have a system that want a new one and really don't need to move. And so just understanding what we have today, what's working, what's not working, um, and how we can make the most use of the technology that we have and own and make sure people are trained on it, a lot of times is, is a pretty big focus of our conversations. So I'm gonna harp on this, you will see, but from, from my perspective, it's something that not only you do from the onset, you need to continue to do, right? Alignment's not something that we achieve internally with our vendors and this is a permanent item. We need constant verification and validation, especially as things change and evolve. So just a quick overview of HCM, right? We wanna talk about the, the bottom left corner here in payroll and attendance management but really understanding the different pieces and how they all work together, from my perspective, is really, really critical. And we're intentional here about saying attendance and payroll management together. I really, there's, to me, there's three key pieces that are just critical to having a successful and very um, seamless payroll process. And that's marrying up your HR data, your employee information, your kind of your master record, your benefit information, what are the earnings and deductions that employee is going to have on, every, on a payroll to payroll basis? The time information. So we need to be able to collect time in and out, our exception time for PTO, for vacation, for reinvent jury duty, whatever it may be, and then push all that data into payroll and so we can properly process it by the appropriate taxes, generate the appropriate reports and understand the sums that we need to pay to, to the different tax bodies. And so having tight interfaces with those three pieces is really critical to the payroll process and just knowing where that data is going to live, even if you don't have the technology that supports each of them, each of them um, it's really a critical function. But as we go outside of that and just thinking of an organization, what's the right fit for me, um, as we start to look at these options, other things folks think about are recruiting management. You know, do you need something to post requisitions online um, to Indeed or Career Builder or Monster or Facebook or LinkedIn? You know, the ability to sort through applications, um, to post or push them to a hiring manager, make sure you're asking the same questions to everybody, generate your compliance report, see how long it's taking to fill positions and even extend an offer letter. Going through your workforce management, I think of this a lot as onboarding and the, you know, the ongoing maintenance or the PAN, the performance action notices whenever um, there's a you know, change in status that we need to do making sure we maintain that within the system, we maintain our employee manager relationships for reporting purposes, all important things. Performance management, um, I asked 10 different HR managers or 10 different HR directors what they think about performance management and I often get 10 different answers. And so we have a lot of flexibility here. If that is a goal-based um, performance management tool, if it is a self-review, a, self -review, a manager review, a 360 review, a peer review. There's a lot of different options and opportunities um, there, just depending on your goals. Again, if we're looking to see who is trending up, who is trending down within the organization, if paying for performance is something that's really, really critical to you, performance management can be a, a very beneficial tool. Compensation planning and, and benefit planning is an important piece. So we talked a little bit about compensation control of performance. 
but the ability to elect benefits online, compare benefit plans, push that information to your providers. Um, some of the providers that we work with, for instance, ADP is going to be able to give you compensation ben benchmarks based on your industry and based on your area. So there's some different tools that we have in and around the technology that can help you make good decisions um, and streamline the process of extending those opportunities and those offerings um, to your employees. And then finally, learning management. This can be very basic with some just general compliance, tracking, right, you know, workplace safety. If we have managers, sexual rest and safety, it can be just, does something need to happen and when does it need to happen again? I need to track and report on that information all the way up to a full LMS where we're giving employees access at their fingertips of, you know, here are the courses that you can take, here are the courses that you need to take, here are some electives, for instance, if you want to develop your Excel skills or your Microsoft Word skills, or take some other things around maybe a manager training um, to continue to build um, your professional profile. Um, a, lot of a lot of organizations that are looking to build culture, looking to grow employees are offering these types of functions. So which of these, applicable, these items are applicable to you? Uh, it depends on a lot of things. You know, the first line I have here is kind of a, you know, funny but not funny, but everybody needs to pay their employees and you don't want to do the calculations manually. I have customers that do it today. Don't, uh, we don't recommend it. Um, certainly once you get above, you know, five, ten employees, I would say one. Um, but it's just there's a lot of compliance, there's a lot of risk, and there's a lot of exposure not having a system. But beyond that, what I find is the main components that are going to drive what you need. First of all, the biggest one size, right? It, it's how many employees you have. Everybody knows the 50, 50 FTE threshold for ACA, but there's other things to kick in at 75 employees, 100 employees, 125 employees from a compliance perspective. And then obviously there's this, the sheer the scale, right, of processing 300, 400, 500 employees without systems to help you drive that information, update other systems when you're entering data in five different places. It just becomes unmanageable at a certain point and things fall between the cracks. Geography is a big one. And I think of this a couple different ways. Um, you know, one from the compliance perspective, different states have different rules and regulations. If we think about time and labor, specifically um, labor compliance, um, you know, California and Washington, Seattle, different places within the country have their own set of labor standards that we need to comply with, along with the federal standards. From a payroll perspective, I'm in the great state of Ohio, where we have local taxation. Pennsylvania has challenging taxation laws to comply with, as well as New Jersey. But it's also going to be multi-location. So organizations that are decentralized, where you don't have all of your employees coming in and being able to sit on the other side of the desk and talk to you about your benefit plans and going through a performance review, having some additional tools for those types of organizations can be very, very beneficial. Industry is a big driver for us in terms of the needs of an organization. Um, a lot of the companies that we work with, um, given our, our, our background and uh, the, the big group of Sage 100 customers that we support, um, are manufacturing and distribution. And we find our manufacturers are often doing some sense of costing where employees are capturing time and they need to capture time not only for job purposes, but also for payroll purposes. So. We find ways to marry that data and use different pieces of the technology for that. We work with a lot of service-based companies as well, um, where learning management, performance management tends to be a little bit more important. Um, work with a lot of organizations that have high turnover, quick service restaurant we're doing a lot of work with today, where things like you know onboarding and work opportunity tax credit are huge opportunities for organizations to save time and resources and money. We think a lot about company culture and, and what are the things that go into driving um, the organizational culture. I'll give you an example. The last organization I was with, I was on the executive team. We did an employee engagement survey and they give you results based on here's what the executives responded, and here's how your managers responded, and here's how your employees responded. Well, one of the questions that's asked is a key driver of engagement within an organization is, are you aligned with the organizational goals and do you understand how you contribute to the failure and the success of the, of the organization. Well, in the executive team, we're all 10 out of 10, 11 out of 10. You know, we, we know it, we've got it going on. We, we understand exactly what our goals are. On the management team, it was a step down from eight 
nine out of 10. And then if you look at the actually our employee base, it was significantly lower, right? A five out of 10 or six out of 10 on the scale. And it was surprising to us, but it allowed us to make a change where we had monthly meetings that every month we talk about, here's what we're doing. Here's our goals. Here's the performance of each department from a PNL perspective. Here's some folks that we want to highlight and celebrate within the business. And we saw that change happen within the organization, right, in terms of that alignment and those goals. Internal expertise um, can be a big driver in terms of what, what technology you choose. Um, a lot of organizations that choose to outsource payroll don't have the internal expertise or just the level of comfort that they feel is appropriate to be able to push that button around compliance. Um, you know, PEO is also another option if, if the internal expertise is not in place to appropriately manage the employee base. Uh, growth tends to be a pretty big driver, and this kind of goes si hand in hand with size, but there's some specific things that happen with growth where you tend to see quite a bit of hiring, so recruiting and onboarding become um, more of a need for us, and then also a little bit more turnover, right? And we, we tend to cycle out folks that we hire in. Um, and so just understanding that and being able to anticipate some of the challenges that go along with growth and having the pieces in place before as much as possible that growth happens um, can do a lot for organizations to uh, ease some of the pain along with that process. Um, compliance is always a big item and you can think of compliance as based on employee size, but there's other organizations that have specific compliance and things that I think about um, are our manufacturers that are ISO shops, right? There's a different set of requirements around, you know, the standards for capturing and validating training for those organizations. We work a lot with healthcare um, where credentialing is absolutely critical. We cannot schedule a nurse or someone to um, assist with a patient unless they have the appropriate credentials in place. And so there's a lot that we do within these systems just to make sure people are doing what they're supposed to be doing and no one is in a, in a position like driving a car or driving a forklift without the appropriate certifications in place. And then going back to what I shared before, right? Our organizational visions and priorities. There may be some times where those things don't necessarily align with what I would call the standard or out of the box, and that's okay, right? It's a matter of where's your vision? Where do you wanna be in the next five or eight years? Because when we look at a system and the average system is in place, typically somewhere between six in eight years, in the case of ADP, they have in 30, most customers are on their platform for 13 years. If you just solve for today, there's a really good chance that you're going to put, you're not going to have the system that's going to meet the needs of tomorrow. And so we really, um, we don't want to oversolve or overbuy, but we want to think about all the things that we're going to need in the future so we don't have to rebuy when it comes time for those, when those closed items come to fruition. All right, so from there, let's let's take the, the next step now that we kind of understand, at least from my perspective, just some of the techniques and strategies that, that we suggest when we evaluate systems, taking a little bit deeper dive into the payroll technology that we have um, with SWK today. And so the first two items, Sister Tail and Workforce Go, are both Kronos uh, Workforce Ready partners of us with, with strategic um, integrations, they're cloud-based systems. But also, as you'll see, there is some on-prem on or in-house payroll type functions along with them. Um, Sage HRMS is an on-prem full HCM that we've been working with for many, many years now. A lot of functionality. We have a lot of customers on that application. Um, ADP Workforce Now is a newer player to um, SWK. But again, with our proximity to the ADP team being in New Jersey, with the number of customers that are on it today, um, I'll share a little bit more on why we think that's a, a very strategic um, relationship and a good decision for, for not only um, SWK, but for our customers. And then certainly our old friend Sage 100 Payroll. Um, and we'll go into, actually, before we go into that, I want to talk about why multiple products. Because I think this is an important thing um, for us to be able to share and to speak to. Um, the biggest one is choice, right? Uh, I am a consumer myself, right? And when I go to purchase something, I want to go to a store and see more than one item on the shelf. It's just my personal disposition. We have 5,000 customers, um, and we're smart enough to recognize that the needs of those customers are not single-threaded in terms of technology. 
Um, there's a lot of similarity between some of our applications I often joke that they're 80 or 90 percent commodity that may be an overstatement but you know we, we want to have choices we want to have options there's reason for each of them um, that I will go through but um, beauty is in the eye beholder and we think that power of choice is an important one and one we expect to continue for a long time having multiple products allows us to give better support for our customers I think an, an easy example here is ADP. We know 20% of our customer base is using ADP today just based on the national standards. And so the ability for us to have strategic relationships at multiple levels within the organization for customers that we know are using the technology um, and want to use the technology, it helps us support them. It's what we've been doing for 30 years with Sage 100 and you know what's the, the foundation of our business. It's what we're doing with Acumatica. It's allowing us to be that advocate for our customers to bring not only the, the power of the customer, but the power of SWK to the conversation to ensure we're driving success, ensure we have projects with vision. And then strategic integrations. I mean, we every one of the products that we have has an integration with our, or an interface, I should say, with our accounting systems, whether it's H100, X3, Acumatica. Um, but there are some that have a little bit more, a little stronger integrations or API integrations that we find um, to be strategic um, as we we look at our customers and especially certain situations with field service and we're getting more and more into construction. And so we'll talk a little bit about from a technology perspective, um, the different applications that have those integrations and why we feel they're important. So without further ado now, um, we'll talk a little bit about Sage 100 payroll. And so for those of you that you've used Sage 100 payroll, it's been a lot around as long as me and actually maybe even a little bit longer. Um, it was recently updated and a significant update um, to what they call payroll 2.0 or to the business objects framework in Sage 100. And what Sage has recognized, this is at a high level, is that organizations today, uh, payroll used to be the strategic item and HR did not used to be the strategic item. Well, that conversation is completely flipped. And especially with ACA, there were just things that were missing within Sage 100 payroll that we need and organizations needed in order to be able to comply. And just for example, one of them they added in um, was the ability to track dependent information as part of the HR profile um, for an employee, which if you're a self-insured, uh, an organization that self-insured is information you have to report um, on the 1095. When we think about the fit for Sage 100 payroll, it's typically recommended, and I'm using air quotes even though you can't see me, um, for smaller organizations or those that are less than 50 employees. That is not a hard number by any stretch. I have customers that have hundreds of employees that use Sage 100 payroll. I have customers that have thousands of employees that use Sage 100 payroll. There are different challenges that you run into with those types of configurations, and you certainly need to bolt on other components to it. For instance, Sage HRMS does have you know, their HR and self-service will bolt onto Sage 100 payroll to give you a little bit more tracking around benefit and allow you to expose pay stubs online. But when we think about it, just as a general rule, and we think about not necessarily the, the techno techno technological architecture of the system, but the functionality that Sage is giving us, we tend to find that 50, maybe up to 100 employee threshold is where it's really the best fit. Um, one of the other good things that's happened with Sage 100 Payroll, at least from my perspective, is they decoupled it from the rest of the system. So in the past, if you had, say you were using a Sage 100 user, you had payroll, but you also had you know, work order, job cost, inventory, you couldn't just upgrade payroll. You had to upgrade the entire system. And a lot of folks either had modifications in payroll or modifications in the rest of the system or add-on solutions where it just became cost prohibitive. And people ended up getting stuck in older payover leases where we had to do a lot more manual work to keep tax tables updated and just to keep the system running. And as of the 2018 release, that's no longer the case. So I think it's good news for Sage customers, uh, especially Sage 100 payroll users. We're seeing some investment within the technology. It, 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 we think it's a good system. And then you know, the integration with Atrix is something they added a few years ago, which um, for the folks that don't know Atrix, they're a third-party um, recording firm. They're based out of North Dakota. I think they're the fourth or fifth largest form processor in the United States. And so they'll do W-2s, 1095s, 941s, 
If you go out to the Atrix website, you can see a list of all the different forms they'll complete for you. A lot of folks don't know that they have new hire forms as well, and you can buy bundled packages within Atrix. So it's a really nice service, and it allows Sage to, instead of focusing all the development and resource efforts on forms for their five, ten different payroll systems, to put that money elsewhere and to moving the technology forward. So um, we're excited about that. I will be sending out and we'll be sending out a copy of this, uh, the PowerPoint after our presentation today. Um, around last year, we did an entire presentation on Sage 100 payroll. I just wanted to make the folks on the call today aware of it. If you've not seen it and you want to understand some of the big differences or big changes that came with the new version of payroll, um, I encourage you to um, join the link. I participated a little bit on that presentation last year, but a really nice summary if you do want to dig deeper. The next um, in-house payroll system that I want to talk about is a Sage HRMS payroll. And so if a customer is looking to purchase in-house payroll, they want to and, and process payroll in-house means you're responsible for the tax filing, the tax remittance, and kind of everything that goes along with that. But it's also an on-prem system. So the licensing model is one different than what you find on the market today, where you buy it, you license it, you own it, and then you pay an annual support to get new versions of the software and unlimited support. And so um, to a lot of folks, this is an attractive model. I always joke um, that CFOs kind of have the in-house or the outsource team. Um, but in the mid-market, it's one of the few applications um, that's still out there that you can actually buy and license. So there's a number along with payroll. And you see a payroll screen and a payroll tree here on the right that can be customized. But there's a number of other integrated modules that we can add into the system to help manage the employee life cycle. If you think about the wheel we reviewed earlier, um, with recruiting and onboarding and benefit management and learning management. All of those pieces are there, or we can just use this as a standalone payroll. The same HRMS payroll does have, as you see on the screen here, a Canadian payroll, um, as well as a U.S.-based payroll, but does not have um, international payroll beyond that. The differentiators from Sage 100 that we typically see beyond just needing some of the other functionality that just comes native or that, that can be purchased with the Sage HRMS module. There's some things within payroll that we find um, if you're struggling with in Sage 100 or in another system and, and, and want to take a step up, HRMS could be a good fit, where things like garnishment management and prioritization. And so if you have folks with multiple garnishment orders um, and you're not sure which one we should be taking first, how they should be prioritized, um, we're not, we want to make sure we don't cut into our disposable income and our take home pay. We have tools we can plug in that will do all those calculations and all that reporting to, for you along with the EFT remittance. Um, effective dating of changes. This is a big one. Um, I don't know that I've ever met an HR professional that is not ahead of the game in terms of things that need to be done. And one of the frustrations that is often shared with me is I know this is going to happen and I just want to do it now. And so with you know, Sage 100, that's not something we have, but with HRMS, it's something we can do with effective dating. So we can change something in HR. If we know a pay change is coming or a pay raise or even a termination, we can have that out for a future date. And then from a payroll perspective, we're only going to pick that information up when the effective date aligns with the payroll period that we're running. So it gives us quite a bit more flexibility there. Uh, managing arrearages. In a lot of work that we do in quick service um, and other organizations where employees may be offered benefits, they elect benefits, but they have a little bit of a variable work schedule. And sometimes, some weeks, um, they may not make enough to cover the cost of their benefit plan. And so a lot of organizations that we work with are managing that manually in Excel or outside the system and just finding a way to nicely manage that and spread it out and, and ensure we're um, appropriately capturing that catch-up income uh, are things that we can do within Sage HRMS payroll that uh, tend to be a differentiator, especially from Sage 100. Um, and cost center overrides, um, we see a lot of organizations that, that go with Sage HRMS are doing a high level of allocation of employee time. And so every earning code, every deduction code, every tax code is, a, is assigned to a GL account. And there's a lot of different things that we can do to the system to pre-split those or to have variable splits um, as we bring that, that um, information in from a time and attendance per se. 
So we've got a lot of flexibility within HRMS and not only capturing that information, but ensuring as we produce that file for the general ledger, um, the complexity of our splits is appropriately reflected within the file. So continuing to Sage HRMS, and you know what you see here on the right side is an employee self-service screen. Um, and again, this is something that if we tie our HR system to Sage 100 payroll, we can give this similar functionality, and obviously it's part and parcel to the Sage HRMS system. Uh, but other differentiators, especially from 100, we see some more advanced attendance tracking. We have some additional buckets um, in terms of how we manage and how we calculate rules that we can account for. Um, we, we think about benefit management. Um, in a little bit different way, where we are having employee rate tables that are being built. And so instead of just assigning a, a deduction amount to a particular employee for a benefit plan, we're enrolling that employee in the plan. We're enrolling those dependents in the plan. We're able to generate nice reports for our providers to show here's what we, here are the active enrollments in our plans, and we can send those across for you. Um, Multi-EIN and company reporting, this is a pretty big one. Um, it's an enterprise level system. So if you're an organization that has multiple EINs or multiple companies, and the next item kind of goes hand in hand, and you need user permissions around them, those are things that we can control. And so we can have a level of separation from EINs, from companies, even within the same company, we can say, this is HIPAA information. We want to hide all that information within the system. We want to hide all pay information for this particular employee within the system, but they can see everything else. Or we can even limit it to a certain screen. There's a job and pay screen. We can say, we want you to see every other screen within the system except this one. So there's a lot of different things that we can do with our groupings, um, with the different cost centers that we use within the system um, or our cost groups to be able to control who can see what uh, within the application. Um, obviously, you see self-service here. And similar to Sage 100, we have the integration of the interface with Atrix um, for all of our W-2 reporting, our 1095, 1094s, and um, similarly to the new hire reports. So the next system I want to talk about is, is Kronos. And uh, if you hear the name Kronos, I know at least my mind goes there. They're very, very strong in time and labor management. Um, other applications use Kronos as their time system. I mean, even ADP, if they get into very complex time systems, will use Kronos for their time and attendance or, or one of their flavors of time and attendance for their application. So it's widely known for that. Um, but, but what I found is it's also very strong um, within core HR and payroll, which if you think of our, our customer base and if you really look at our customer base, which obviously we do pretty often, um, most people are really looking for those key functions and, and Kronos does it very well. Uh, it's flexible in a way that it allows you to process payroll in-house while still having a cloud-based system. And so most web-based systems where there's nothing installed, it's all in the cloud, multi-tenant, are really, they, they want to take that power of attorney, they want to do the filings for you, they want to print the checks and everything off to the bank because they want that level of control. Um, I find some organizations I work with like owning that. They like cutting the check, they like sending those paper, you know, that paperwork over, they want to go to the cloud so they can process payroll from anywhere and have you know, just a little bit more elegance to the system, but they don't want to give up the control. And a lot of systems don't allow us to do that where Kronos does. Um, I have intuitive UI on here. I just, it's something that I found in using the system and the feedback that I've gotten from folks, not only in demonstrations, but folks that have gone live with the application. It's just a pretty easy system to use and to navigate. And that's an important thing for me, right? It's, uh, I, I love technology. I find all these bells and whistles and things to be really exciting and interesting and fascinating. But the real true test is is it usable. Does it make your job easier? Is it conducive to your processes? And the answer for Kronos is I'm, I'm getting a yes from our customers, not only kind of pre-sale, but post-sale too. And just little things they've added into the system. I'll give you an example. On the payroll side, there's a, a, a place where you can add a note into a system for a future payroll period. And then as you go to process that payroll period in the future, as you go through your different checks and balances, it's gonna add a step and say, Nathan, you, you added a note in here two months ago that I needed to do a catch-up pay um, for a so-and-so employee. 
and I'm not going to allow you to con con continue through the payroll process until you check it off. And so there's just some some things that they've done and thought about to build into the process that I think from an HR payroll professional's perspective, this makes life a little bit easier. Um, an easy transition from an on-prem to a cloud system for Sage customers. So this is part in the technology and how it's presented, but a lot of this is with our partners too. So our, because our partners for the Chrono system and Workforce Go and Scissor Tail, they're both HRMS partners as well. And we find oftentimes if folks are looking to move, um, there's a tremendous amount of risk that we can mitigate and not only the ultimate success of the project, but the cost that's going to go into the, to the migration into the project if that vendor knows both systems. And so us knowing both systems and then, you know, our, our implementation team knowing both systems, we know the source data, we know where it needs to go, we know the limitations of Sage, right, and what we have or you know, the things that are new within Kronos that we're going to be adding in. So it just tends to, to create a much more seamless project less finger pointing because we all are starting and under, you know we, we start by understanding what data we have today and where it needs to go um, and then the reporting within the system is is pretty flexible and maybe this isn't rendering as well as i had hoped um on your screens but if you look here in the middle these are basic screens where i have you know an employee number a first name a last name some information so all of our demographic screens can then become charts they can become pie charts or graphs they can be saved and so a lot of what we're doing within the system is kind of customizing and building the views based on roles for what you want to see when you log into the system because regardless of how much of a power user you are how excited you get about technology our experience is the easier you can make it for people to see the information to consume it and act on it the more likely it's going to be used. It's just the, it's the, the bottom line. And so what we can do with a lot of this information in our views with Kronos is exactly that, is give the actionable information that we need to give to our administrators, to our managers, to our employees in a view that makes sense right at their fingertips. And then one of my favorite things is when you, re, when you export the information, it maintains the same file and formatting of all the reports that are in the system. So that, and I know it seems like a little thing, but the ability to export and manipulate it just like it was in the system um, is a, a really good thing for a lot of customers. I talked about the strategic integrations, and you know, this is this is one of them. With you know, Acumatic is a, a growing practice for ours from ERP, and especially for folks that are doing field service and construction work. And you know, it, it is an important item. If those are things. Um, in terms of synchronizing that project information, the task between your accounting system, your time activities, the different accounts and sub-accounts, there's a lot of flexibility and a lot of automation that we can bring to that process and, and having an integrated solution. So again, just thinking about our overall strategy, why these items are on our portfolio, um, you know, that integration interface is, is very important to some of our customers and I thought it was important for us to highlight today. All right, so finally, the newest um, addition to our portfolio is ADP. Um, obviously, they're a market leader for payroll and HCM. Um, they, they basically started the payroll industry about 75 years ago. Um, I think I've mentioned this, but you know, being based in New Jersey, literally we're in each other's backyard, so it made a tremendous amount of sense for us. And when they launched um, um, that partner um, channel opportunity, we, we jumped right on it. It's a strong technology stack, and there's a high level of investment. And as uh, someone who looks to give good options to our customers, it's one of the things that we look at, right? We always want strong relationships. We want good support. But we also want to make sure the dollars that you're putting and that you're spending on the, on, on the system and on the technology are going to make your experience better, from not only from a support perspective, but the overall technology. And we see good investment um, from ADP. Uh, we've talked about it a little, but it gives us a chance to better support our current and future customers. I'll talk a little bit more about what that looks like. There's opportunities for their integrated services with 401k and pay cards and background checks. And that's not an, uh, it's not a unique item for ADP. You know, Kronos and other providers do that. I just find in terms of everything they have and what they're doing to not only provide these, but they're doing the administration of some of these items. It's just a little bit more seamless than with some other applications. Um, specific functions that I think are strong, obviously very strong in payroll, 
onboarding and they have some really cool technology and reporting with a field grabber. So basically you can look at a screen, grab some fields by clicking on the fields. Um, ADP will then um, recommend a couple different you know, standard reports that you may want to use um, based on the information that you're selecting. So again, trying to bring a level of intuitiveness or, or analysis to help you do your jobs a little bit better. I find ADP is the best fit in our portfolio if you're looking for a best in breed um, instead of full suite deployment. And what I mean by best in breed is we have some organizations that don't want everything to be with one vendor, right? They want they, they have different ideas, so maybe they want um, Greenfield for recruiting, SAP for talent management, ADP for payroll, Nova Time for time in the dark, Kronos for time and attendance. ADP has a marketplace with 300 other vendors where they have the integrations to their technology today, where if you're trying to piece things together, um, it can be a better fit for the, this, this, the sheer reason that you don't have to incur the heavy burden of the development costs and make that happen because the work has already been done. Um, international customers are going to be a much better fit for ADP. For Sage HRMS, we have the ability to support our Canadian customers. Um, from a payroll perspective, but outside of that, um, really we need to go to ADP and we can provide a true global payroll system. Not a huge portion of our customer base, but something that we thought was important to be able to offer. And then finally, you, know, you see it more and more um, with you know, different technologies and, and different systems, but they truly have a mobile first development roadmap. And so when they're thinking about how they deploy the system, how they design the technology, they're thinking about how it's going to be consumed um, on a mobile device. They're the number three app in, in, in on the iTunes App Store. And an interesting statistic that I saw the other day, um, I think from the Harvard Business Review, is that 90% of applicants today that are looking for jobs are using their mobile device at some point for the search. And I thought that was a little bit surprising, but in terms of their go-to-market strategy, it is very much a mobile go-to-market strategy. Um, this is not unique to ADP, but I thought it was important to highlight here just to give you a little bit of a sense um, to what we're doing. Uh, implementation methodology, um, as well as the alignment and the goals, is, again, given my experience, are really important pieces. But when we made the decision to move to ADP, these are the pieces that we were able to get, right, in terms of a dedicated account manager, dedicated support representatives, um, you know, the migration of your data and some assurances around that then we just are able to provide an additional level of control over. And actually, you don't, it, it's, a, it's something really unique to the channel in terms of what we're able to offer. So these are things that we're excited about. And again, reduce everybody's overall risk when we look at these projects. The last piece I wanted to share with ADP is, is somewhat of a, um, a view of all payroll processing, right? When we, we think about the in-house tasks versus outsourced tasks. And I'll leave this up on the screen a little bit here. Um, when you look at in-house payroll, all of these pieces are not going to be applicable to every organization. Um, but at the same time, a lot of them will be. And so when folks look at the benefit of outsourcing and what they're really going to save, you know, a nice visual that we look to show is, you know, the white is in-house. And then if you overlay that, the gray items are things that when we outsource payroll, and in this case with ADP, um, that they're going to be able to do for us. So um, when we look at what's right, given this, right? What's the best choice with all of those things that we mentioned, right? In-house, outsource, ADP, Kronos, Sage. It's, we want to help you make the right decision. And there's different ways that we can do that. Um, we do a free technology assessment. We offer it annually. I'll do it more if we're in a time of big change for organizations. It's something that I do personally. It just really go through a roadmap. What are your needs? What are your requirements? If you think of that alignment, that's, you know, your, what are your hurdles and what are your initiatives? It's very much based on that, just going through the employee life cycle. We can go through solution assessments with you. We can look at multiple solutions. We can get you multiple prices. We can help you compare and contrast and align that with your overall goals. And if we need to, we can even do customization. So we've got development resources that we can you know, add to, modify, manipulate things. We try to stay away from it. Just to get the, the, the as simple as simpler we can keep things, the better from my perspective. But at the same time, there is a time and a place, and we do have the resources for that. And so, really, what I wanted to leave you with was 
this item, right? Is this alignment item? And making sure as you go through the process, as you think about what this could mean, if you're, if you're looking to make a change, get on the same page, look at some technology, right? If you, you go through an assessment, after the assessment, revisit what we thought we were in terms of our hurdles and initiative and what we're going to be accomplishing and make sure we're able to communicate that because the more we know, the more we're aligned, the more you're aligned internally with what you're looking to do, the more chance that you'll be su successful no matter what direction you go with payroll. So with that, I thank you so much for your time and attention and we'll be happy to open up for any questions that um, have come in or people have. Thank you, Nathan. Like we said, we'll now open it up for questions. So if you have any questions, please enter them into the question section of your GoToWebinar. And we'll give that a minute or two to see if any come through. Okay, I'm not seeing any come through. So thank you so much, Nathan, for your informative presentation and for taking time to be here today. Absolutely, my pleasure. Thank you, have a wonderful rest of your day.